Bitcoin is about to be tested, and this could be one of the most important tests of its entire life. All right, so let's get into this. Can Bitcoin survive a global economic crisis? All right, so if you're not familiar with Bitcoin and how it got started in the first place, basically it was created in response to a financial crisis, the 2008 financial crisis, all right, where basically we saw uh, a lot of big government bailouts, quantitative easing, or basically just printing money. Um, and that's one of the reasons Bitcoin was created in the first place as an alternative currency that has digital scarcity that, you know, where money can't just be like, you know, printed on a whim. And since Bitcoin has been created, it's long been touted as a store of value. And we're about to find out if that holds true, all right? Because while Bitcoin was created in direct response to a financial crisis, it hasn't yet weathered a global economic crisis like the one we find ourselves in right now. You know, we've seen the stock markets lose over a third of their value and it could fall even more. Uh, you know, we're finding that um, U.S. unemployment rate could be as high as 30%. You know, we have to wait for the final numbers to roll in, but it doesn't look good at this point. And if it is, that's higher than the Great Depression. And while this crisis looks a lot different than the 2008 financial crisis, a lot of the response is still the same, right? We're seeing a lot of bailouts, or at least talk of bailouts at this point at the time of recording this video, and also a lot of talks about money printing or, you know, quantitative easing, right? The, the exact kinds of things that Bitcoin was created uh, in response to. So is it a reliable store of value? All right. So one test that it must pass in order to prove that it is, um, is that it has to decouple from the stock market. So what do I mean by that? Well, we've long been told that, you know, Bitcoin's not c correlated with the stock market. And I just talked about in one of my recent videos that it seemed to fail that test. All right. So like whenever, um, the stock market crashed in middle of February, Bitcoin basically did the same thing. And you might say, oh, that's just pure coincidence, but I don't think so. All right. I even talked about in my last video um, that this seemed to prove that wrong. But since then, we've seen the Bitcoin price go back up. All right. And stocks haven't gone back up. And this is the real kicker. All right. If this pattern uh, it continues or we see some support happen here, then we will see Bitcoin actually decouple from the stock market. All right. So at the time of recording this video, um, it looks like it's starting to do that. So will that happen long term? Well, this is a test uh, that Bitcoin must pass to prove that it's not correlated with the stock market. All right. So let's think about some possible explanations for this, right? So maybe there are a percentage of Bitcoin holders that are going to uh, behave like stock traders, right? And that could cause some of this correlation that we see here. But perhaps there's still a base level of demand um, that still offers some support of Bitcoin as an actual store of value um, when things go bad in the stock market, right? So it's hard to say for sure, but it'll, it'll be really interesting to see. And some criticisms of this view will say, well, hey, you know, Bitcoin lost half of its value and the stock market lost, you know, a third of its value. So clearly it looks like Bitcoin's the loser here. Now, a counter to that is to say that, well, the Bitcoin price has rebounded and started to rally a little bit uh, ever since it fell and stocks have not. All right. They are going down and they look like they're still going down. They haven't really rallied at all. It's just kind of bounced all the way down to where they are now. All right. And if stocks go to 50% of their value, it's very possible that Bitcoin will return to its 2020 all-time high much faster than they will, and potentially even its actual all-time high faster than they will. So let's look at that a little bit, right? If you look at a historical chart of like the Dow Jones Industrial Average, I'm just use this one as an example, uh, we'll see basically any period where the Dow crashed to 50% of its value it took it about five years, maybe even more, to recover back to its all-time high. So Bitcoin could recover potentially much faster, all right? You know, we're only two years or so away from Bitcoin's actual all-time high, and it's very possible that we could see a return to its actual all-time high faster than the Dow could recover to its all-time high. And even if it doesn't, it could still very easily return to its 2020 all-time high. And as always, this is not financial advice. I don't claim to know what the Bitcoin price is in the future. I'm just telling you what the prospects look like. But Bitcoin has to pass this test of decoupling from the stock market to prove that it's going to be a reliable store of value. All right. And if things get worse than they already are, uh, and it can do that and can prove itself as a reliable store of value, then this this could be Bitcoin's moment to shine. All right. And like I said, you know, Bitcoin was created in direct response to the 2008 financial crisis. 
And if it can survive this crisis and prove itself to be a store of value, then this could be its moment to shine. All right. Especially now that we have, uh, you know, the Federal Reserve printing money. If you hold U.S. dollar, basically your dollar is now becoming worth less than it was before, um, simply just because of inflation. And this is an opportunity for Bitcoin to act as a hedge, all right, with its digital scarcity built in. Basically, it's designed in a way where nobody can come in and just print more Bitcoin. We know exactly how much Bitcoin is ever going to be created, and we have a good idea at the production rate and how quickly we'll get there. At least that's one of the big promises that Bitcoin makes, and we're about to see if it can make good on it. So again, this is not financial advice. This is just my opinion as a blockchain developer, uh, but I am optimistic about the future of Bitcoin throughout this entire thing. This looks like fertile ground for the uh, technology to flourish. But again, not financial advice. Ultimately, that is for you to decide. All right, so I hope you liked this video. Uh, if you did, subscribe to the channel and click the like button down below. It really helps these videos get found by the YouTube algorithm. And if you're interested in becoming a blockchain developer, maybe you, you, know, you watch this video and the technology sounds interesting to you, then I'm going to show you how to do that step by step. Uh, in a free training. So head on over to dappuniversity.com forward slash bootcamp uh, to find out. All right, until next time, thanks for watching Dapp University.